Welcome to Genix Unfiltered. Did the internet ruin music? Grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's go back. <laughs> Genix Unfiltered. I'm Steve. I'm Eric. And I'm Kelly. We are Genix Unfiltered. This is our inaugural podcast here on Genix Unfiltered. I'm super excited to do this. I don't know about you guys. Nervous a little bit, to it, be honest. It feels weird. This is our it first does time feel weird. having like actual microphones and headphones. It feels weird. It sounds weird. It's. Uh, I, I feel like we're like imposter syndrome using all this fancy stuff when I don't know what I'm doing. Really. Oh, God, they're going to find <laughs> us out. That's right. This is a strange one. It feels weird, but it's cool. But uh, yeah. hey, thank you, everyone, for joining us. So thank today you. we are going to discuss the topic of did the Internet ruin music? Ooh. Whoa. This is a bit of a polarizing topic because, you know, obviously today things are a lot different than what we remember. So, again, to start, let's do like a full disclosure. Do you guys have a screen, a streaming service on your phone for music at all? Oh, yeah. I have uh, two streaming services. I have Spotify and Apple Apple Music. So I got two going, and I don't know. I think I think they're great. I love uh, both the services, but um, I actually pay for the Apple Music. So I, I'm stuck with Spotify ads for now, at least. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Kel? Do you have anything? Um, I had Spotify, but the free one because I'm a cheap girl, so I ain't paying for that. Hey, and, ad life. Yeah, well, you know, and uh, I do have Apple Music now. Um, admittedly, I'm not a huge music streamer in general. Um, I'll hear a song, I want to play it, but I don't stream it regularly. So those are the sort of the two that I have used or do use. Okay, that's fair. No, me too. I have definitely paid for Apple Music, and I've got the free Spotify as well. And I think I have Amazon. Amazon Music has one as well, I think, now. Oh. I don't really use it, but I'm pretty sure I have that as well. I always forget about the Amazon services that like, give you for paying for free shipping. Yeah, with the Prime membership. Yeah. So I definitely have that, but I never use it. But so yeah, definitely, full, yes, fully in the streaming world, and I listen to it pretty much every day. But let's... Let's like go way, 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 way back when back we were to the good old days. when we were itty bitty little kids. I mean, you know, and at least for me, I could never imagine that this is where we would be all the way back in those days that I'm sure you guys remember. Very well, very fondly. Listening to the radio, all the top forty, top one hundred, Casey Kasem, all those countdowns. And sitting there and waiting to record your favorite song so you had it on a mixtape. The struggle was real. That was always tough, yes. I remember like, trying to get that right spot before they stopped talking, the music started and all that stuff, yeah. People, people, kids nowadays just will never understand the stress that was, but kind of the fun that was, and just... Yeah, it was just so stressful because <laughs> the DJ would never be kind. And it's the one song you're waiting. It was the Bon Jovi song that you've been waiting for to get on tape. And the DJ would talk over it. He That's, knew what he was yeah. doing. He knew, like, someone's out there waiting to push record on this one. I'm going to talk to the intro. It was so stressful. Oh, yeah. It yeah. Was always, yeah, I remember that. You had to say, well, yeah, A, you had to wait, too, because it was, you know, the top 10. It's on the like, top 20, top 40 countdown. So if you didn't, you know, you could be listening for, like, two hours just to catch the song because you don't necessarily know where they are in that top 40 either, nope, right? Nope, so You're just kind of waiting for that song to kick in. And I don't know. I took it to another level because I was just a weird kid that, you know, would just spend all day doing that. I would get hyper-focused, and I'd even get my little cassette with the blank booklet in it or not book the sleeve in it write down my track list i would like color on the thing and it would be like a whole day event wow you were uh, you were committed that's good i definitely recorded songs off the radio i don't remember really that intense in terms of like listing songs and stuff i think it's like a mixtape and just listen to it and then record over that was a good too you could record over it again if you wanted and i couldn't do that though like I just got so obsessed with it. I don't know. I mean, clearly I had nothing else going on for me as a kid, and I would just spend my Saturdays doing that. Everybody else is out riding bikes and playing baseball, and I'm in there like, i got to get my Bon Jovi song. You were one of those kids. You're like the kids now are like, go outside and play. Yeah, no, I just wanted to get my Bon Jovi song. Um, but did you guys, like, label your tape, like, mix things, or was it just like you had them in a pile and you just knew what was on there? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just had like a pile of them. I don't remember ever specifically labeling them at all. And usually, if it was, it was probably one old label, and you scratch it out and change it again with the next one. And it's like the old VHS tapes you'd have at home. It'd be like yeah. one TV show, and someone would scratch it out and be like another episode of something or a movie or. Or, you know, your birth on tape, and then dad would fo tape over it with a football so, game or something. I was there like the Millie Vanilli <laughs> Grammy performance or something like that. <laughs> this is I, way more important. I don't know if I labeled like the actual like track list, and we used to like name the. Uh... The tape or the, the CD, if I was bringing a CD, Ooh. I give it like a whole name. 
Well, we're talking about tapes. So what would be like an Eric? Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me let me hold off on CDs for a minute. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to know because you're different ages. So like little Eric doing cassette tapes, what would you name one of your mixtapes? Oh, uh, I wasn't so creative when I was a little guy. It would have been like mixtape number one. So nothing exciting. Oh, Keep it simple. Yeah. I thought yeah. you would have some sort of fun. The CD like... era was more exciting when I was a little more like, we'll, I'm going to be creative and we'll blah, blah, blah. There, we'll, we'll get there, Eric. We'll get there, I guess. There. We'll get there. That was a whole new, that was a whole Yeah, new exactly. Level. We're still in the cassette era. Sorry, I'll hold back the cassette level, Eric. Um, I remember my first cassette I ever got. Um, I got it from a uh, birthday, one of my birthdays, birthday party. One of my friends bought it for me, and it was the New Kids on the Block cassette. That's funny. I remember the first two tapes I ever bought. I bought uh, Slippery When Wet by Bon Jovi and BC Boys License to Ill, and I was like eight years old. Oh. I remember that cost like 15 bucks for the two of them. I thought That's it was a like, lot. Like, four, yeah, like seven bucks a pop. Yeah, I must have like birthday. I remember my dad taking me to the store to get them. What about you, Eric? Oh my God! Are we talking about the first one I bought, or like or got you as a owned. gift? Owned? Yeah. Jesus, I think um, I think it was like California raisins. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I miss those guys. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> they're we, not so they're not so PC now, California no, raisins. Yeah, but yes, uh, I know. they were a big have, thing back then. We have new kids on the block. We have. Uh, Bon Jovi and Beastie Boys and California Raisins. <laughs> Everything's so, great fine. Come on. I never owned California, California Raisins tape. No, I definitely never had that. I do remember. I remember as a kid. I remember when I got Vanilla Ice to the Extreme for Christmas when I was like 10. And I got that in The Simpsons and the Blues. That was one of my favorite Christmases. Oh. And I also got Sega Genesis, which was a complete surprise. That's really random. Yeah, that's... Topics for another day. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stay the course. One of the things I find is it's so easy to like talk about all these things, but we're going to try and stay the course for you guys. So we're not. Yeah, it's easy to sort of, as you go down memory lane, you start to think of other things. Yeah, 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 Rambling. for sure. But after the cassette era and all the drama, at least in my little world of recording songs that I wanted, um, we kind of moved to the CD era, I guess. Yeah, right? that was a big jump, CD era, because then it, that then brought in also like. So you record the CDs, but then we're also talking like that's when like LimeWire and Napster and things like that were around too, yeah. right? Like that was sort of a whole new era. It well, let's, totally changed. Everything was awesome. Because given our age, um, let's start because our, CDs, when they first came out, was we were, a huge jump we in were technology. like young teenagers or yeah. early yeah. teenagers. Yeah. But CDs were a huge jump in like yeah. over tapes for oh, sure. Yeah, like you could like in the ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like try it to like find the song you want on a tape if it's like halfway through, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you can yeah. never like just jump to the start of a song. No, yeah, you always had to like fast forward it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like fast forward it and stuff. So CDs were a huge jump there. You could jump to the track you wanted to listen to. You could still fast forward through a track on a CD. Mm -hmm. Generally, the sound was like people will argue whatever, but like the sound was like better on a CD. Yeah, yeah. People can argue sure. that point, but like CDs are just a way better medium overall than tapes. Here's a question, just because we are, I asked the question about cassettes, and this kind of gives insight to our listeners as to what kind of music people we Time were. Out. Time out. We forgot the biggest thing about this, the, the cassette we never talked about. The pencil. If the, if, you're, if, you're, if the tape actually got, like, unwound and screwed up. Oh, yeah, Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. I literally thought Eric meant, like, cut the tape. We're stopping. No, right. like, no, no, no. Yeah. I was like, guys, we missed on, like, one of the biggest things, to, the, the biggest tassels of I dealing with a out. tape. I blocked it right? out. Right? We yeah. talked about, like, you know, recording off the radio, this and that. But oh. tapes had big pains in, in the butt. One of them being, like, if the tape unwound itself, oh. you had to yeah, go find yourself a pencil, stick it in the, the, the little gear. Well, that's assuming you can even fix it. When yeah. you stuck in those gears, it get all chewed up and stuff like that. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That was always a... Yeah. It was always a hassle. But so yeah. anyways, point point for streaming there over like cassettes for back in the day. Well, that they, was CDs, that was not an issue at all, obviously, yeah. which but is great. They were durable, those cassettes, because, I mean, I would yank those out and I would use my hands and this and they'd still play. So they were durable. Yeah. That was the thing with CDs. I was always like, don't scratch the CD. That was yeah. like a big thing. Like, but, yeah, there's a whole industry around CD repair and like, oh, you can like fix your scratches with this like paste in this or this wax and yeah like, they had like repair kits you uh, could buy like CD, okay wait like before CD though we, yeah. we want to answer the question of yeah, if sorry, you, you remember i know erica like i said i thought we were stopping the <laughs> sorry, whole thing that took us backwards that's sideways. okay that's okay i was just confused if we were actually like stopping or we were just it, it was very people who are watching us on video will see the me and steve are like what's going on uh oh i was looking like do we hit a do we not have record again i know um <laughs> but if you remember how old and yeah. what was your first CD? For me, I, I didn't get a CD player till like I was old, like it was later. I was like, I think I was like fifteen. Mm -hmm. By that point, like everyone kind of had CD players and stuff like that. But the mm -hmm. first two I remember getting, I remember specifically wanting to get the Blueser, the Blueser, the Weezer Blue album on CD, but they only had it on tape, so I didn't buy it. But I got Incesticide 
Oh, no, sorry. Nirvana in utero and uh, Aerosmith, big ones. Hmm. What about you, Eric? I think it was uh, two Guns N' Roses CDs. I think it was Appetite for Destruction and Use Your Illusions 2, I think, which everyone had November Rain on it. That's really random. I thought it was, uh, I'm pretty sure that was Use Your Illusion 1. Was it 1? Okay. Because I know I didn't get both at the same time. That's a really random. I would never picture those would be your CDs that you got. I, I like Guns N' Roses a lot when I was younger. Like, but I, I got my CD player when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. So Guns N' Roses at that point in time was probably on the way out already. Oh. I know, I know. But I like those songs. So I was like, I want to listen to them on my new CD player. The choice is I have both those albums. Yes. Yeah. My, on tape and CD. My first two CDs I got when I got my Discman from Santa Claus. I think I was probably. <laughs> that great. I know. <laughs> I think I was probably, I think 15, 14, somewhere around there. Yeah. And I got the Aerosmith. Big ones. I got Aerosmith Get a Grip. Was that the one with the cow on the front? The cow udder? Yeah. 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 And yeah, I got ones. Counting Crows, the yellow one with Mr. Jones. I don't know what it was called. Uh, with Mr. Jones and all those songs. Was it like mm. August and everything after? No, that something? was the one after. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure because I was like long December. Throwing Copper. No, I don't no, know. I don't <laughs> right, now, yeah. right now, everybody's screaming, being like, it's called this. Yeah, I, I was not a huge uh, Counting Crows fan. I love that CD. They were, I, they were a big band, though. They were like... Huge. I loved it. And I got that with my disc man. I had like an actual, what did they call them? Like a stereo system. I got that a bit later that had like the, remember, did you guys have ones that had more, you could put more than one CD in it? No, I never did. Oh, wow. I didn't have the, the, well, the st- like the carousel or whatever they called it, where they could put like five discs yeah, in there. No, I had. I, I, had, I did. Fancy. No, well, the point points for you, I guess. Well, yeah. I can thank my grandpa. He loved all that stuff, so he'd buy them for, nice. <laughs> no. for the, me. The first one I had was like a just like a like a like a boom box. Like it was just all in one unit and then mm. had, the, had one tape player on the front and then had yes. a top loading disc. And then I upgraded to one that was bigger that had remember like yeah, like the speakers would come off of it. Oh, yes. I remember that one. I so had one of those yeah. it was more of like a those were both purchases from good old Future Shop. My mm. CD player was the one that had like the single uh, CD player on the top. Yeah. And the had a single cassette. That's like the fourth time you've done that. You're going to tighten that thing up on you. Yeah, no, I, I had a single cassette underneath. Yeah, I had the same thing. Yeah, yeah the, exactly. The, 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 the speakers Not detachable, off. though. I mean, oh, how, okay. that one unit. how was I cooler than you guys, and I wasn't even a huge music person? Well, life changed, I guess. Look at us now. Yeah, Sadly, well, I, mean, I didn't have a grandpa to fund my <laughs> CD uh, addiction. I had a lot of CDs, too. Like, I had, like... 300 probably well that kind of, I had a ton of cds i love listening to music still do that kind of goes to the next like sort of transition once the cd era came there was i mean i think they had it for cassettes too but we were too young to do it ourselves but now we're into like the columbia house the subscription yeah. services for cds yeah actually like buying like cds and stuff right like it's a whole it was a whole different experience than it is now like mm-hmm. you had the like, columbia house like you're talking about mm-hmm. going actually into a record store I used to love that, yeah, going yeah. to, like, HMV or Sunrise, which is up here. We're in Canada, so those mm-hmm. were sort of the two big ones here. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But actually going into a record store, like, looking through, like, all the CDs and stuff, like, way different now than, but even then than now, like. Yeah, yeah, they're starting just... to come up again, which is kind of nice to get those retro, you know, like I said, there's a Sunrise that popped up again. It's, like, nice to go in there and. Yeah, exactly. You know, search through, like, the artists and find their CDs and see what there is and stuff. I used to buy my CDs at Zellers. Yeah, you can buy them everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> where's that want want noise? Want want. I did. I did be I did BMG, which was the up here in Canada. We had Columbia House as well. But I remember doing BMG mm-hmm. like a couple of times, mm-hmm. and that's how I got a ton of my CDs. It was could, like you had to buy five at regular price, and you got a bunch for like three cents or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the price for the regular ones wasn't too crazy, so I remember doing that a couple times. Yeah. And that's how. Yeah, like I said, I had a ton of CDs. I had like a big like three. It was like I think it was like three hundred CD holder like. Oh my carousel gosh. Carousel thing. Those giant carousels that all the, was a pain in the ass. All the, <laughs> all the way through, like, teenagers and moving out as young adults, and you had to carry that thing around to your apartments you were oh, moving to. Oh, it made to. away a lot of different moves, and yeah, but oh it was always gosh. boxes and boxes of CDs. Was, yeah. Yeah, but one of my favorite things about CDs was they kind of upgraded the whole, like, booklet inside so there would be like behind the scenes photos there would be lyrics it was always always annoying when they didn't have lyrics yeah. that's the one thing i miss now like with streaming is like you can't you have to go find the lyrics somewhere else so when you want to like have a karaoke party by yourself you have to like google the lyrics yeah I, I guess you could like they'll actually play the lyrics if you're watching it like yeah I did, just, did, on, you, on the yeah. Music has that now but, but did you guys all notice that eric didn't deny that he has karaoke parties by himself i did notice that 
Let's not be. Let's not. Uh, <laughs> That's another episode. That's yeah. another episode. You guys are jealous you're not invited. I mean, yeah, I want to play karaoke or sing karaoke. This makes me want to sing. Don't worry. We I'm have the sing. microphones. Yeah, oh, no God. one wants to hear us sing. That's for <laughs> no. sure. It's weird enough hearing our own voices in the headphones. Yeah, yeah, it's oh. still strange. Uh, but yeah, the booklets were really cool. It would be like a whole day event, especially if it was like a CD that you were like really like looking forward to, like that release CD. Yeah. And yep. it was just there was always an event around it. It was like the CDs being released. People would line up at the record stores and which is the thing yeah exactly. oh yeah yeah no it's just it, it's just different nowadays yeah you don't have to do that you just wait till it pops up online and just no listen to it and i don't know about you guys but like i don't listen to like a full album anymore like when like a new artist no comes out with like a new like cd or not a cd like a new album mm-hmm. and they release it like on a streaming service i just listen to like the big song like back in the day when i used to buy like a cd from like a band i was actually a fan of i would listen to the whole the whole thing all the yeah. way through yeah i mean i would not always. Yeah. I would definitely if it was skip like, some songs and stuff yeah. like that, but it was a lot easier to, you know, you would, but you would listen to more than you would where now, like, it's just literally you download the song. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Even, unless you really want to get into the artist, you could just kind of pick that one tune. You don't even look at any of their other yeah. library until something else pops up on the radio or something you hear about. But that was, like, a strike against, like, CDs back in the day, too. Like, you bring up a good point. If a CD had, like, one song on it, you pay, you just paid, like, mm-hmm. 15, 16 bucks for one song. Well, that was the thing, too, exactly. Unless you got, like, um... A compilation album or something like that. Yeah, you, yeah. Were, you bought a CD hoping that you're going to like, you know, you buy User Illusion 1, and it's like, I hope I like this. <laughs> <One> <laughs> you, of, then you find, you're the only one way to find out, right? <laughs> one of the biggest CDs I remember being super excited to buy when it came out, and I listened to all of it, was the um, Alanis Morissette CD, when she kind of came back as like a grungy that artist. Was, yeah, that, that was a huge album, oh, too. Yeah. I think for us, it was strange being from Canada, where it's like, this is a girl that was like, a child TV star on this like mm-hmm. really goofy comedy show called You Can't Do That on Television. Well, then she's a pop star for a moment. And then she's a pop star up here too, doing like some like eighties, like really eighties, like mm-hmm. cheesy stuff. And then mm-hmm. to see her coming out as like angst ridden, like angry. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Was... Oh, look, I still belt out those songs if I'm in the car by myself or in the shower when you're just having one of those angsty days and you just belt it out. It feels good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you ever watched um, How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. Like that one character, Robin Sparkles. Mm-hmm. That's right. Her trajectory pretty much follows Alanis Morissette's it was, trajectory. It was very, very yeah. sort of spoofing Alanis Morissette. Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. was great about that. Yeah. The CD era was... I do have one story about the CD CD life, if I can share it. CD, not CD. CD. <laughs> not CD. CD. <laughs> um, <Elliot> Kelly. <laughs> remember, they had obviously all the record stores, but then there was this whole like movement of where they would have the like used CD stores where you could go buy yeah, used CDs yeah, yeah, for yeah, cheap. Yeah, 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 I remember those, yeah. You could go sell your used CDs, which was really cool because you could make some extra money and then buy something else you wanted. I mean, it wasn't like a profitable thing or anything, but you know. Yeah, Cheapies in Hamilton showed out to a store that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I don't remember that place. Yeah. Yeah. But I went and I... I always loved the Soul Asylum song, Runaway Train. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Never really cared about Soul Asylum in general. Just really loved that train, that train, that song. Yeah. I didn't want to buy the whole CD. Couldn't download it anywhere at this point. Or maybe I couldn't. I was just not there yet. But um, went to the used CD store. They had the CD. It was like $4, super cheap. It was used. The booklet was ripped. But who cared? I wanted the song. Come home. And CDs, once you open them, you couldn't return them. Mm-hmm. Come home, put it, open it up. It was another Soul Asylum album in the wrong cover. Oh no, oh, no, so they don't mix it up. It wasn't Runaway Train. It was their other big song. I don't remember what it is. Misery. 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 Yeah, yeah. Misery. Which is a fine song, but I really wanted Run. I was so mad. So that mad. That would be really annoying. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Uh... <laughs> Just hit my chin off the mic. Sorry. Um, I was so We're still mad. Used to the hard, new hardware. Yeah, we look like clumsy golden retrievers right now. Kind of like. I'm just like saying like, I'm not even moving. <laughs> For those of you who are just listening, if you want to see the antics, go to our YouTube channel and check it out. Yeah, Gen X and Filter, we're on YouTube. Um, you know, we're a hot mess, but that's okay. We're having fun. Yeah, stop yeah. and say hi. Um, so that's sort of, I just remember this, like, I just, I was so angry. I was so mad. I just oh, yeah, wanted that super song. Annoying, yeah. But, um, yeah, the CD era was a good one. I had lots of CDs. Yeah, lots of... yeah. That's where I really kind of, like, I've always been, a, like, well, like I said, like, even like I was a kid, like, I was into music, like, mm. but I've, yeah, so CDs, like, I totally embrace them. I listen to music pretty much every day. Even now, like, just driving to work with them, I'm always streaming music at home. Okay, so we kind of went through the CD era. We all loved it. I mean, it was just a very nostalgic era. But then came technology, as usual. 
whether it ruins things or makes things better. Well, I guess that's, that's what we're discussing we're today, here to right? Find yes, out. Right. What do they call it? Disruptive technology? Yeah, yeah. But after a whole little world of CDs and the joy that that brought, what came next? Napster, LimeWire, all the... The sort of the start of the streaming. Yeah, I, I admittedly don't know a lot about the streaming. I know what it does. I know what it gives you. But I don't really remember, like, when it started, how it started. I just know there was controversy. So I'll let you guys know a little bit more about that. Well, yeah, like, when Napster first came out, like, I loved it because it solved a bunch of problems we just talked about. Like, if you didn't want to buy a CD because there's only one song you liked on that CD, mm-hmm. well, just go on Napster and download that one song now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah So it, I thought it was great. I'm like, this is, like, phenomenal. And, well, I could get whatever song I wanted. So awesome, number one. Point number two, it was free. Yeah, so. you didn't pay for any of it. Stealing it. Well, it was called file yeah. sharing. It wasn't stealing. <laughs> Look, we're all guilty of it, of course. No, yeah. no. I mean, it was just, it was so new. You kind of didn't even think about it. It but, was yeah, just it was... like mind blown. We can get anything we want for nothing. So it was kind of just this like, whoa. Yeah. Like it yeah. was such, to me, it feels like it was such a jump from like listening to CDs to all of a sudden, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Like Eric said, the, you know, the fact that you could get any song, like, you could get any song you wanted. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Granted, it came with a weird caveat that you didn't actually know you were downloading. So, like, you know, you had to worry about viruses or the songs may not be real songs. You'd get weird <laughs> random, I remember, like, it was, like, Bill Clinton impersonator. Oh, my God. Talking about, like, the FBI or something or other. I yeah. forget what it was, but... And yeah, so it was a it was a crapshoot. And how many home PCs got ruined with oh viruses from oh, downloading probably. Yeah, yeah. stuff off LimeWire or Napster or BearShare or any of these things? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then I remember... It's like the Wild West. I remember Napster was... I think they got sued or something, Yeah, right? Metallica. I remember really large always sort of being the... Not that he sort of always seems to be the speaker for the band, but yeah, they really... And again, I, rightfully so, because like I said, no more millions of people were using it but nobody was paying for any of it so it's but yeah it was great as uh, for us as consumers to be like wow we get whatever we want when we want how we want it blah 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 blah. but as an artist it's really annoying and i get it like oh, yeah. it's I mean, not it's fair well, you're taking people, money in their pocket you're, people yeah. are literally just stealing your stuff yeah, yeah you spent god knows how much time and money like to create to just have people put up on the internet and take no, it for free it's, yeah it's, it's not uh, fair and it's it sucks no but it definitely introduced all of us to like what the world we're in now mm-hmm. yeah. of like Apple Music and Spotify and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It was that first iteration of it where it's like, oh, you can get anything you want off the internet at the drop of, you know, with the click of a button. Well, yeah. n- sorry, go ahead if you You know, and so that kind of, you know, then it sort of turned into like iTunes and stuff like that. And now to where we are now, like Apple Music and everything. Well, now, like, do you, I mean, this might be a stupid, naive question. Again, I don't know a lot there about are no it. stupid but... questions, just stupid people. Oh. Well, <laughs> raise David, his hand. David Spade, nice quote. <laughs> um, but, Artists get compensated now to be on like Spotify and Apple, right? Yes, they do. I mean, it's from my understanding, it's peanuts. It's not even peanuts. It's fractions of a peanut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's like next to nothing. Which kind of sucks because, like, again, for people like let's just use Taylor Swift as an example. I mean, she's getting billions and billions of listens on her thing, right? So, yeah. Well, but- I remember I saw. Sorry, but I saw a clip of Snoop Dogg talking about it. He said he had like a billion streams in one year. And he got forty five thousand dollars. What? Yeah. That's, so that's wow. like nothing. That's nothing. For can you imagine if he sold a billion albums? Wow. The difference, well, how that's much right. money he, he sold a billion albums. He would have you know put a couple extra zeros behind that. Right. right. They, like, do, here's an interesting question. You guys may or may not know the answer, but do artists have to give permission to be a part of the yeah. streaming services? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, okay. Because some artists aren't on Apple Music or Spotify. No, there's mm. a few that have been. I think Neil Young was uh, against. I don't think he's on now, but I think initially he was against being on like Apple Music or Spotify. Well, he because... started, remember he started his own version, that yeah. title with like Jay Z and um, a couple other people. Yeah, mm. I think maybe Kanye West as well. I can't remember who's on that. But I never listened to it, but no, there was yeah, but no, there's still artists. I I know the Beatles for a long time were not on there and stuff, but mm. and so now... yes, artists have to. This just sort of made me think of like, you know, again, how easy it is to listen to music whenever you want, because you can do it on your phone, your computer, your iPad, all that kind of stuff. And then it just made me I know I'm kind of going a little bit backwards, but I have to mention this because it was such an iconic moment of all of our childhoods. I'm I'm, I'm sure. But listening to music in a car now and then remember listening to our old disc man in a car and how difficult that was. Oh, God. Oh yeah, I had that. I had the. I think we've talked about this yeah. before, but like I, you know, you had like the tape play. The, the tape would go into the cassette deck to get mm-hmm. the audio, and then you had to put the power into the um, the the lighter jack. Yeah. Let's be real, guys. Back then, 
Real facts. Cars did not have CD players. No, I didn't know. Well, no, I didn't know cassette players and cars back then. No, yeah. it was a whole like rigmarole, and then you had your disc. I remember, it, and it would skip all the time. Mm-hmm. You had a pothole or somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, yeah. and people complain now about like you know it's still a problem. People like looking at their phones while they're driving. Mm-hmm. Back then, people oh had like gosh. those binders full of CDs in their car. Oh, yeah. They'd be looking at one, that, yeah. trying to find the CD they want instead of looking at the road. I'm oh like, yeah. So uh, driving distraction is not a new thing. Remember, they some would have it in the visor. Yeah, the small yeah. one. Yeah. Oh I had a big, like, I had a big like booklet, the whole like. I think it was like 50 of them. Oh, it was such so a pain. Flip through. But then even if you wanted to skip the song, you had to like do it on the Discman. So you're trying to like lean over. And because the yeah. cables were never long enough. So you mostly had to keep the Discman on the floor beside you while you're like the passenger floor to reach. And then, you, yeah, it was just it terrible. It was a whole thing. Yeah, it, it is way easier nowadays. It like, is. I you mean. just go now, especially both newer cars now have like Bluetooth and stuff like that. So like yeah. literally just turn your car on and your phone's connected and, oh, yeah. and you're if you, going. If you have car, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, like you're laughing. Like you can Look, just... Yeah. Talk to your your assistant and be, get whatever song you want. Look at the world we've lived through. The world we've lived well, through. Well, even now, like, I mean, we haven't really touched on it. It's not so much of this, but, like, how about, like, Shazam? Ooh, yes. You know? I love and now, Shazam. Like, it's built into, at least, I think it's only on Apple, but it's built into, like, Siri. These guys will attest to so, the like, fact. So, like, you can just ask it, hey, what song yeah. is this? And it'll, most... Yeah. songs it'll tell you exactly what song it is and then it'll be like hey do you want you want to open an apple music and there you go it's so you know these guys can attest to the fact that i'm terrible at remembering songs so shazam is my friend because i'll always be like what's the song and when well, you'll be like, like hey, what's the name of the song that goes like ba da ba it's like uh what but these it's... other song that goes ba da ba but it's fun <laughs> <Like Donald's jingle? laughs> and i'll be like it has the word baby in it okay yeah. well yeah it's like yeah yeah no and so shazam has made a yeah. lot of, you know it's just the technology and stuff like that around music it's it it is so much further than yeah you know, when we look back now, talking about like when we were kids and stuff like that, like, it is it is actually kind of crazy when you think yeah. about it. We, before we started recording, um, Steve mentioned that he had a tiny little bit of information, at least, I don't know how old or relevant it is now, but on the artist's revenue, just sort of like what they... Yeah, let me try and find it. I forget where I had that photo. <laughs> I just sprung it on him again, I guess. But Uh-oh. Um, last time. While you're looking for that, I'll just like... It, that's crazy that a billion streams and he made $45,000. Yeah. That's insanity. Yeah, exactly. And think about the young, like the newer artists who don't have a who, fan base like that. Yeah. And they're just trying to make it and they're probably making nothing. Yeah. It, it's definitely, I think uh, it's a real challenge for a new artist to try to make any money. But wow. I think like that's problem. To be honest, the problem's probably always been there, right? True. If you think back like to the CD days, True. if you're a big artist, like you're going to get your CD into the stores, right? Like, as a small, like, artist starting out, same problem. True. How, how do you get your CD into, like, HMV or Sunrise Records? That's true. Right? Just a different sort of way to... Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's just... Yeah. I guess, yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. It's weird. It is weird. And I feel bad now for all those songs that I down, that I downloaded that I didn't pay for. I'm sorry, Maroon 5. You better send them a check right now. I definitely still have... See, I definitely Adam, still have songs on my... Adam Levine, will you forgive me? That came from my wire. <laughs> Adam Levine needs your money. Fun story. That's how I became a Maroon 5 fan. I had a friend who came over. I barely knew what LimeWire was. It was on my computer. He came and he downloaded a whole bunch of songs, and he's like, oh, I love these guys. They have a new album, blah, blah, blah. And I listened to it, and it was the Maroon 5 album, and from then I was hooked. Songs about hooked Jane. Forever. Songs about Jane. That's a band we could have a whole conversation about, but they have, like, you listen to that mm. first album to what, like, Mm-hmm. They were kind of like a real band then. Mm-hmm. To now they're like this kind of weird I'm, poppy, I'm dance, super overproduced like, pop. Yeah. I'm yeah. not such a fan now, but that's okay. We'll talk about that another day. Still love you, Adam. In All case right. he ever listens, just so you know. I'm sure he's gonna the, be a subscriber <laughs> real soon. All right, I found my list here. We can actually maybe we'll put this. We can put this up mm-hmm. on the actual on the YouTube video, or you know, if you're watching this on video, I'll put the mm-hmm. we'll put the graphic up here. I've got the list here of uh, sort of what they kind of pay mm-hmm. per streaming platform. Like I said, I don't know what year this is from, but so title music. It pays the most. So to make one dollar, you have to have seventy-eight streams. Wow. So I don't. Wow. I mean, that's crappy. What? You have to have seventy-eight plays to make a dollar. Yeah. Okay. So Yikes. for Apple Music, it's one hundred and twenty-five plays. <gasps> Apple. To make a dollar. Yeah. For, for Amazon Music, it's two hundred and forty-nine <gasps> oh streams God. to Amazon. make a dollar. I should say there's a, there's the percentage of how many, like, it's 0. 0.0 of a penny. Like, it's nothing. Ugh. Spotify is 300. It takes 314 <gasps> streams to make a dollar. That's, like, almost three times as much as Apple to yeah. make a dollar. Wow. YouTube music apparently is 500. <gasps> 
Oh my god. And then Pandora is 752. Oh, I forgot about Pandora. Is that it still is a thing? Crazy. Everybody does. Yeah, I don't know if it's still around. Remember it was big in the States. Yeah, the yeah. took off up here in Canada. No, no here it was always just kind of Spotify, Spotify. Or, or Apple Music. I mean, those facts, again, like, obviously we know, but, like, to hear them, it's just like, oof. Well, it's just crazy how little they pay. Like, Yeah, yeah. now I see why... Taylor Swift just makes all her money on concerts and well, merchandising. That's what all these guys do, yeah. Hearing all those stats and numbers, I feel really bad. I'm no, sorry you for just my realize past it's, self. Uh, it's a grind. I mean, it music is more accessible than ever, mm-hmm. and it pays as little. There just has to be. Ever. So I wish it's a there, weird uh, dichotomy. I mean, I wish there was a way that they could get compensated properly, and we could still listen for cheap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. No, I don't know. Uh, I don't that, know. That, that magic answer out there, I don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 someone's getting rich off of this, but it ain't the artist. No. That's, no. that's obvious. The uh, recording you know, companies. Yeah, you know them. exactly. Yeah. Oh, that was my tie-in? Yeah, Eric Eric didn't get the throw. <laughs> I was, like, throwing to him with my oh, eyes. Well, you know what time it is? What time? It's quiz time. Oh. Quiz time. This is my favorite time of the show, so we're doing a quiz. I'm going to ask you guys... To name me the top five streaming artists on Spotify of all time. Okay, can I just okay, whatever, that's fine. So you want to go first? Top five of all time. We're going all time. Like, oh, see, now I got to try and remember when Spotify kind of started ish because it's not going to be like. It doesn't even from the... matter though. It's oh, who's it doesn't. On there. It's who's... Eric, this question's not fair. Why is it not fair? It's fine. I'll do it. I'll Are guess. You sh- would you, want to, would you want me to ask you like an Adam Levine question instead? Sure. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Top five. I'm just going to name yeah, top five. Top five artists on Spotify I'm of all time. I'm going to say Taylor Swift, Kanye West, Drake, Beyonce, and... Um, How many guesses was that? That was four. And uh, Justin Bieber. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. Huh? Okay. Okay. So that's Kelly's top five. All right, Steve. I just went right off the top of my head. I think yep. it's going to be all newer artists. I'm going to steal a couple from your list because oh. I think definitely Taylor Swift... Drake. Um, Those two. Yeah, who well, else? Steve to... gets very serious about his quizzes. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to think about it. I just don't want to say the same ones you did because you had a good list there. But oh, um, see, how about, let's say the Beatles. I'm sure that's totally wrong. Okay, I guess three. The Eagles. Eagles is four. And I'm trying to think of someone that's one like more, more recent. Um, Post Malone. Ooh, that's a guess. terrible guess. Okay, that's a terrible so guess. You guys tied. You, Stop. You both got two. I'm going to guess it was probably Taylor Swift and Taylor Drake. Drake. And Drake. Yeah, exactly. Kanye so, West wasn't on there? No, no. So here's the top five. Number one is Drake with 71 billion. Mm. Wow. Uh, two is Taylor Swift with 71 billion. I guess Drake is 71.7 billion, so he's a little higher Canada than, beat than Taylor Swift. Six God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Taylor Swift was in two. Number three was Bad Bunny at 68 billion. Who is this Bad Bunny? Pop, super popular. Yes, yeah, that's a problem. We're showing our age here. We're not too connected to all the <laughs> yeah, new exactly. stuff. That's my problem. That's our problem. Uh, then we have The weekend at $52 billion. Oh, oh, I always weekend. forget about him. And everyone's favorite ginger, Ed Sheeran. Oh, I love Ed. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran at number five at $46 oh, That makes billion. sense, yeah. The weekend I, too, eh? With two yeah. Canadian boys on there. Nice I'm to probably see. $1 billion of those $46 billion for Ed Sheeran because I love his songs. Yeah. For anybody who's curious about the rest of the top ten, it was Ariana Grande, Ooh. Justin Bieber, Eminem, Post Malone, and BTS. So I think he's a post Malone. Justin he, Bieber. He's in number nine. Yeah, that's cool, though. Three Canadian boys and, on there. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy to see. Yep. Good on him. So anyways, you guys tied, so no no winners today. No winners. So. We didn't do as bad as I thought. Get to keep that 20 in my pocket. <laughs> but before, before we wrap up this podcast, I think that we need to answer the question that we started with, because all this discussion has kind of made me rethink some things and remember things, but... Well, Eric, we'll start with you. Sure. Do you think the internet has ruined music? Absolutely not. I think uh, it's just music is always evolving. How we listen to music and like consume it is always evolving, and I think that's just what's happened here. You know, all the same problems we talked about, like artist revenues, that's not a new problem. Mm-hmm. Artist revenue has been a problem for, for decades, right? Like artists never made a lot of money on their CDs. Mm-hmm. They made more money on touring and uh, concerts and mm-hmm. like merchandise. So that's a problem that's still there. Um, I, I think honestly, like it's better for the consumer, like it's more accessible, easier to like find the songs you want. Uh, so I'm going to say it's not better at all. I think it's actually improved things. Hmm. What about you, Steve? Ooh, I he's pondering. I'm going to say, yeah. So I'm having more thoughts here, but you know, I'm going to say no, it hasn't ruined music mm-hmm. with obviously the caveat that I think that there's other, con- this is probably a other topics we get into because we didn't even get into like no, I TikTok mean, music no. and all this stuff and but in terms a, of accessibility yeah. for users and stuff like that and entry, price entry point, it's 
I think it hasn't ruined it. It's made it more accessible to people. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's people that don't have great internet or whatever, so it's not universal. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think overall, it's made it way easier to listen to music, enjoy music anytime you want, anywhere you want. So I'm going to say yes, it has. Or sorry, no, it Ooh, hasn't it's like, what ruined happened? music. I don't know. This is, uh, again, it's me. They're all going to roll their eyes because I can't ever have a yes or no black or white answer. But for me, like overall, no, I don't think the internet's ruined music. Like you guys said, it, it allows us to listen different ways. I do have issue. I think there needs to be a better way to compensate artists because they do work hard. But at the same time, because we, I grew up that way, I do miss the sort of nostalgia around music because now music, again, in a weird way, it's, Feel, I don't know, music, I don't know, I'm getting all jumbled, but I miss the nostalgia of back in the day, taking the time and being like present in the moment, listening to the radio and recording your song and like it being like a thing, at least for me, I miss, you know, that kind of stuff. I miss going with friends to the store to buy CDs and talking about this and that. And now it's just very individual, right? You just listen to your music on your ear pods while you're at the gym or in the car. I don't know. It's just... But I don't think overall it's been ruined. I yeah. think it's just different. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a lot it's different. different. It's, ru- it's much more of an individual thing now, yeah. whereas a lot of times back in the day it was much more of a communal thing or shared a shared event experience. of like going to yeah. the store, yeah. listening yeah. to music, buying it and stuff. Now it's just... You just open your phone, do it. Like on a Saturday, going to the mall with your friends when you were a teenager, what's the one store you always went to? Yeah. The music store, right? You would listen to the, remember they had the little headphones, you'd listen to the little samples. Little listening stations, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and I mean, I think it's for kids now who never, who've only grown up with music this way, it's like archaic, right? They're like, what? Well, that's exactly, what? they can't even imagine No, it. and I think it's pretty cool that given the ages we are, which sucks sometimes. But (laughs) I think it's cool that we kind of grew up with, like, you know, like I said, way back in the day, recording our stuff off the radio, and now we can see where it's evolved. It's really cool. No, we've seen that transition from, like, analog, Mm -hmm. literally hitting two buttons, to Mm -hmm. now just, bloop, and there it is, yeah. But, yeah, it's, uh, I don't really think about a lot of this stuff, so it's fun to sort of sit back and talk about it and discuss it. And, you know, anybody out here who's listening um, has any comments, please leave one on this video if you're watching on YouTube. Or, I don't know, can they leave comments on podcasts? I have no idea. Yes, we'll they, can, they can, yeah. If you can, please leave a comment. Um, but, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, that was awesome, guys. And yeah. hopefully everyone listening enjoyed it. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us for almost uh, 45 minutes. Wow. Damn. Damn. That was a good one. And just really quickly before we end, in case you didn't know, if you missed it, we are on YouTube. You can watch the antics. Yeah, we're on YouTube. You can watch <laughs> us wherever you guys want to listen to your favorite podcast. We're on every platform at Janet's Unfiltered. And uh, so, guys, thank you very much yes, for joining us today. You. Our inaugural podcast is on the books. Good job, everybody. Get yes. a little we fist did it. bump. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Eric just hit his mic. <laughs> Way to go, Alex. Bye, this <laughs> close to the episode. <laughs> I mean, right. it's us, right? We're clumsy golden retrievers. We're just flopping around. That's but thank right. you guys so much for your support. We really appreciate yeah, it. We'll and see we'll you guys in the next one. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.